Welcome to the Jay and Rob Toy Show. We've got a big, small kind of episode because we're talking about scale today. But I am only one half of the duo that is going to dive down this rabbit hole of action figure goodness. Let me bring in the Megatron to my Starscream, Mr. Jay Bartlett. My friends, how are you? And yes, I'm Starscream. Fair enough. Let's dive right into a discussion on action figure scale. Now, scale is one of those things that I love because when you sit back and you look at all your pretty shelves that make you feel better as a person and as a collector with all your little trinkets and dollies, inevitably, nothing lines up. It's not an even line of characters' heads. It's up, down, all around, big, small, and they're all great for different reasons. So I wanna start with the big boys, the 12 inch. I know some of my favorite 12 inch scale stuff out there. What do you love when it comes to a 12 inch action figure? I would say the thing I love the most is the detail. Now I'm gonna reference my favorite 12 inch line which would be of course Kenner's Star Wars and these were some of the earliest 12 inch I ever got. I also um, was into Six Million Dollar Man and Big Jim as well. But Star Wars was just awesome for the simple fact that Luke and Vader and Obi-Wan, they had actual cloth clothing, which I thought was pretty cool at the time. The lightsabers and blasters were huge. And the posability was really cool on them as well. I've never been able to really get down with a 12 inch figure, especially when I was little. Now my kids, they love a 12 inch doll. They love to be able to play with something that is closer in size to them than, you know, like a GI Joe, where they just dwarf over it. But I could never find a way to play with it as a kid, something that was 12 inch. I found like the joints and the articulation wasn't there. And even collecting up until maybe the last couple of years, I was really kind of, good with not collecting anything big because of course it's pretty expensive especially when we're talking both vintage stuff and new adult collector stuff however we've stumbled into the workings of mondo in our travels and i have been absolutely hooked by almost everything that mondo has put out from the tmnt figures that blend both playmates in the mirage comics to the batman the animated series 12 inch figures that look exactly like they stepped out of a, an animation cell and even the he-man line which i think is generally really good it's a bit of a pick and choose line for me because it is a different take on the figures but man those are some great 12 inch figures that I can't get enough of. Yeah, they're, they're fantastic, and we got to play with He-Man and Skeletor, a shooting action figure adventure, and they're a lot of fun. My, my big problem, see what I did there? The big problem with those is the space. Um, you know, we have tons of shelves throughout our houses to display these wonderful figures. The 12 inch are just, they're just too big. I mean, I, don't, I just simply don't have the space for them, so. Aside from the Kenner Star Wars, I really don't have that many. I know you've got a few Mondo in your collection. Yeah, I mean, I just like having them on the shelf. I like that I can see them from across the room with great detail. I like that they are larger than life. I like that they pop from my collection, which is a lot smaller scale on average. And while, you know, they don't release a lot of 12 inch figures for the lines that I collect, when they do, it's kind of like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna pick this up. Even if it's only one or two a year, I will make the space for a one 12 inch figure because it's more about height than it is about width. You know, two or three, you know, four or five inch figures take up more space than a single 12 inch. So if I can find the right figure for the lines that really speak to me, I'm 100% on board. But Jay, dropping, dropping down a notch, where do we go? Where, where, where is your sweet spot after 12 inch when it comes to bigger stuff? For me, it goes all the way down to the six inch line. Uh, that's just where I go. Again, I'm not huge on the big stuff. So six inch to me for a long time was a big figure. Now that's kind of like the normal in adult collecting is the six inch. Every, every line now is six inch for the most part. But um, I'm a more smaller scale guy. That's just me. Yeah, and you know what? We say six inch, but the reality is, and Masters of the Universe Classics is a great example, near the end of that line, those figure scales were getting pushed closer to seven inches, or, or at least six and a half. I mean, you look at uh, Dark Despot Skeletor and God Skeletor, which are representations of, of Skeletor from the live action movie. They're so tall that their face is covered by the, by the bubble and the logo in the packaging because yeah. they weren't meant to be that big. They're meant to be a little bit shorter. 
So the six inch, which seems to be that standard adult collector range, it, it even, it's getting pushed to a bit, a bit higher to the seven inch. And you know what? That's kind of good. I think that's an acceptable push and I'll take the extra inch where I can get it. <laughs> I bet you can, my friend, I bet you can. <laughs> my, my big problem, of course, and we talk about this and I'm gonna reference G.I. Joe with the classified series that is pretty new to us collectors. How can you have G.I. Joe without the vehicles? And unless you're gonna do some kind of HasLab crowdfunding for a Sky Striker, I don't see how you're gonna have vehicles in G.I. Joe. And that's a problem, that's also a problem with Star Wars and the Black Series, where they've had a handful of uh, speeders and such. They did bring out the TIE Fighter from the First Order, but that baby was 200 bucks, and that's just a single person TIE Fighter. But maybe it's just the wrong time now, because I look at, again, Masters of the Universe Classics, your favorite and mine, and we got Castle Grayskull, we got like vehicles, like crazy for that, everything from the, the Battle Ram, the Wind Raider, of course, Battle Cat is kind of like a vehicle too. So like there was a lot of options for that six inch scale line and there was no media, there was no video game. There was not really any comics that tied into, you know, the line and certainly no TV or show uh, uh, whatsoever or movie. So it can be done. Hasbro just has to decide to commit to doing it. Okay, so I'm gonna differ with you a little bit on this one. I think, uh, as we know that the Masters Universe Classics were subscription-based, so I wouldn't really call that a mainstream. You couldn't go into Walmart or Toys R Us and get classics. So they kind of already kind of knew what they were doing, but I think for Hasbro to make vehicles for these other lines that are all in all these department stores and all these retail shelves, I think that's quite expensive. And I know for a fact that the TIE Fighter didn't do anything and a lot of the like Luke Speeder and Ray Speeder were often seen in the clearance racks because they were so ungodly expensive that they just got discounted and then they moved. So I don't think Hasbro's ready to, I, I agree with you there, I think Hasbro's not ready to, to fork out that kind of money. I'm gonna have to disagree with you disagreeing with me <laughs> because there's always there's always a way to get it out there. I understand retail space is really expensive. No retailer wanted classics. They didn't want He-Man on store shelves whatsoever. So the fact that it survived on subscription only is like unheard of. It's like one in a million. Now, we are already seeing tons of exclusives for G.I. Joe and who knows when that's gonna carry over to other lines that Hasbro's doing. But why not do an Amazon thing where it's just warehouse space and you could get a Sky Striker? Now you're not worrying about retail space, but now it's up for yeah. pre-order on you know the biggest retailer in the world. Again, what do I know about retail and toys? Absolutely nothing. I'm just one fan trying to give a solution out there to help all my G.I. Joe collector friends. And it's probably easier than people think. You mentioned Haslabs, like why not go that route? Like Sky Striker, sure, for classified. That's a yeah. no-brainer. That's an iconic vehicle from G.I. Joe. Yeah, it's huge. The sail barge was huge. You know, the Razor Crest was huge. Unicron's huge. Put up something from G.I. Joe and get people excited. It's not gonna be the flag in six inch scale. So give us a Sky Striker at the very least. You know? I agree, I agree with you 100%. I think Haslab is the way to go for this kind of thing. Um, Amazon Warehouse, sure, but uh, you know, retailers like we have in Canada, those small spaces, they're, they're just, I mean, how many times did you see that TIE Fighter? Not very many people carried it because the box was, I can't even expand my arms that big. It was so, so huge. So a warehouse distribution center like Amazon is perfect for this. Haslab is perfect for this. And if that's the way it's gotta be, I'll do that. I'll fund that Sky Striker, let's do it. But I'm just saying uh, in a common store like Walmart, you're not gonna find anything this big. And that in lies the problem with the six inch line for me. All right, well, Jay, I wanna talk about my favorite scale now. Your favorite is the six inch, I like it, but by far my favorite scale is that three, four inch range to five and a half inch. And we have so many lines that fit that range. We've got G.I. Joe at three and three quarters, or 3.75. Uh, we've got superpowers at around four inches. We've got Ninja Turtles around four, four and a half. And of course, the original Masters of the Universe, 5.5 inches. Like you said about uh, about vehicles and six inch and how it's really hard to do, going down just a couple inches really gets you a lot more playability. Think of all the vehicles we got for Joe, uh, superpowers, Ninja Turtles, and He-Man, and play sets on top of it. 
for just two inches less when it comes to an action figure. That's a great trade-off, and frankly, I would rather collect four inches now for those figures if we got more of that stuff. How do you feel? So I'm actually with you. The 3.75 is my absolute favorite. I, I wish, I never wished we we'd taken that leap to the six inch because the vehicles and oh my God, especially the play sets. That, I want more play sets more than I want vehicles. We're both in that boat. Um, the 3.75 is my favorite and I, I like you know the, the four inch and even the five inch He-Man. I wish it would go back to that, and we've heard a ton of people say, you know, throughout our travels that it's because, you know, when we were kids, that's what we could hold in our hand. And now that we're adults, we want something a little bit more detailed, a little bit more shelf-worthy, I guess, but I wish that the scale would go back to that for the vehicles and for the play sets. I agree, and I mean, we're gonna get to figure lines that are sub three inches, and there's a bunch of them out there, but do you think it's an arms race where it's only going to get bigger and we can never go back? How, how do we get back to like a, a great three and three quarter or four inch figure? Because between Joe, Superpowers and Ninja Turtles, and I'm not even talking Masters at five and a half, but between Joe, Ninja Turtles and Superpowers, that's there's only a half inch difference there. And those are some of the best action figure lines of all time. Mm -hmm. How do we how do we come back, or is there ever going back? I don't think you're going to go back. We're seeing now that kids, their playground is not with these figures and play sets for the most part. It's it's online with video games. I mean, they collect Fortnite skins, and those different skins within the game are their figures. It's just these virtual toys that they play with now. I don't think you're gonna go back. There, there's some niche lines like, you know, the new Sectars line, the new Flash Gordon line that's coming out there, 3.75 inch, but again, that's very, very niche. It, it's sad to me, man, it, it really is, because as much as I love the Star Wars vintage line, the Black Series at six inch outsells it like 20 to one. When I was young, the first toys in action figure would be Star Wars. Uh, I lived on an Air Force base in Bitburg, Germany. I had then from the sort of the on-base thrift store as people moved in the military, they'd get rid of all their stuff because they don't want to ship it. So I had a lot of 12-inch Joes and Planet of the Apes dolls that went with it. I think the reason that people care so much about toys in this day and age, especially as an adult, is because as a kid, I saw Star Wars one time and I could never experience the movie again but the toys was my only connection to the movie. It was my only way to be in Star Wars. So playing with those toys all the time is what brought me closer to the movies and it actually became more important than the actual movies actually were. I think for a lot of people, it really, it's the fantasy and the imagination that goes with it. Creating your own world, finding your space in that, finding what parts of these storylines you identify with and how you interact with the, the toys themselves. The line doesn't matter to me, the gimmicks don't matter to me, the play sets don't matter. Like, the toy is what's important, and I look at a play set as a toy. It's not necessarily an accessory to that toy because I never had enough toys that I could be like, oh, I'm only playing with these toys today. So I never viewed play sets as being integral to the sort of world they came from. So it was my Star Wars playset, but it's got a Tron figure and a D&D &D figure on it, and that's sure. fine. The future of action figures is a tricky one because I'm not sure that action figures right now are generationally sticking the same way they did to my generation, the generation of people that grew up on Turtles and Transformers, the generation of people that grew up on Power Rangers even. I noticed with my kids today, that they don't hold the same relevance in some way as they did for me. But it's because they can experience the media, the content, the fantasy, whatever they want to do, they can binge it and you know get it in bulk all at once, where we could never do that. So we had to immerse ourselves into it 
and these were our proxies into those worlds. So I think it's that personal connection of the time spent with the toys that makes them so important to each individual person. I think we'll always have action figures. We're always gonna have comic books. We're always gonna have postage stamps. Like, But I do think that their role and their importance is already significantly diminished and will continue to diminish to some degree until people figure out a way to involve those in an updated play pattern. My name's Curtis, and here are my top three pieces in my collection. So, the first piece is this Faker 8-back. Faker is my favorite character. 8-back is first carded figures to be released. He's part of Wave 2 originally, but he's, uh, he's also part of the 8-back. So this is really cool because I like the comic and figure collaboration. To find the Ordeal comic is pretty uncommon, and it is one of my favorite pieces. The second piece is in book form, and that would be this one here, which was the Mattel sample mini comic. As you can see, the two are beside each other. This one was the one that was released with the figures, and this was the one that was uh, promoted to the toy companies and dealers. And what's cool about this one is uh, it's not actually called Masters of the Universe, it's called Lords of Power. My third piece is one of my grails in my collection. It is the Terror Claws and Flying Fists two-pack. Uh, this piece is important to me because I got it from a very good friend, and it's just been a very long journey to obtain it. And the artwork is just amazing, so it definitely stands out from a lot of my items. So Jay, when it comes to micro lines, those that sub three inch category, I don't know how long that's gonna stick around if the four inch line's gonna go, but there are a few examples out there of that scale that have been pretty good in the past and are still sticking around in the market nowadays. What, what stands out for you? What comes to mind? Uh, right off the top of my head, it's Kenner's mask, of course. Uh, mask was a little bit different where the vehicle was the main star. And I'm just talking about the toy line now, I'm not talking about the cartoon. So you got a really awesome detailed vehicle that transformed and a little figure with that, with a little accessory. And then later on, down in Mask's lifeline, that's when they kind of did the opposite, where they were bringing out figure accessory packs and figure two packs that actually did nothing. So a lot of that, a lot of those figure packs from Mask are really expensive now. Uh, Mask is the first one that comes to my mind. Yeah, I mean, I like stuff like Army Ants, and I like stuff like the mini Funko Pops, and Lego figures are pretty big, uh, especially customer customizers love doing Lego figures and, and catering them across the board because clearly they're interchangeable and swappable. But my favorite are probably the Mega Constructs that are out there right now, and you pick any brand that you like, Halo, Masters, uh, Turtles, they're pretty cool. They have lots of articulation, lots of accessories, and I just, I don't think you can miss for that. I don't know if they're gonna catch on to the same degree that other figures will. The price point is certainly in, in favor because I think you can get a five pack of figures for whatever brand you like for like $23. If you can get five of the best characters from any line for $23, and they're good, and they come with accessories, and you can still play with them despite being small, that's a pretty cool thing. And hey, it is all about, you know, saving space on the shelf. So you can have a lot of figures at that battle beast type scale and, and just populate, you know, hundreds of them in, in a space that can only fit maybe a dozen or so six inch characters. So it's a fun scale. I feel like I'm gonna lose anything that I collect at that scale though. So I kind of like just, just stay away from it. It's action figure spotlight time. Jay, we've been talking about scale. I'm gonna let you go first. Uh, Cause I wanna see what you're gonna show us. I'm always excited. I kinda, I wanna follow you. So what, what do you got showing? What are you showing off this week? Sure, so let's talk 12 inch. Now, I forgot about this obscure line that I almost have the whole set for, but this is a 12 inch, if I can get him in frame here. I don't know if this is doing him justice, but this is a 12 inch. This is one of the actual Inhumanoids, one of the villains. This is Tendril. 
So this guy is very rare and very expensive and I picked him up just last year. He is absolutely awesome. He has got some great articulation. He looks a lot like a Swamp Thing, but uh, yeah, his arms move. The things with the Inhumanoid villains is that they have this little window on the top of their head. So when the light shines down, it makes their eyes glow or the little tentacles here. And I think these guys are just awesome. You don't really get the scale of this guy until you're in his presence because he is huge. And the heroes for Inhumanoids are six inch. So again, the scale is just fantastic. And just look at the detail on this guy. He's just so awesome. That's wicked and correct me if I'm wrong, but that's a pretty pricey figure too. There are three Inhumanoids. The Inhumanoids are what the villains are called, of course. And yeah, all three of them are very rare and very expensive. I believe Metlar, who's the leader, um, him or Decompose are the rarest. Um, this is the third, but this is my favorite of the three. Well, you went big, Jay, so it should surprise nobody that I did the complete opposite for Spotlight <laughs> this episode, and I went super small. Uh, when we were talking about sub three inch, uh, I mentioned Mega Construct, so I'm gonna showcase this. This little guy, I'll just put on my shoulder here. This is Faker. <laughs> and everybody's gonna have to wait for the close-up because you're not gonna be able to see him. He is so small, he's so tiny, he's almost cute. This is Faker <laughs> from Masters of the Universe. He's got the orange axe and the orange sword, of course, and the Skeletor-like armor. And underneath, he's even got the little mechanical robot sticker there, but he's got art articulation in the knees, the elbows, the shoulders, the wrists, uh, and he's even got like painted red eyes. So again, the detail in something like this is fantastic. Now, if it wasn't for the stand that kind of helps keep these together and makes it easy to display, I, I wouldn't have these and I wouldn't be all for them because they'd get knocked over. And you know what happens when you drop like dominoes or marbles, they just scatter everywhere like Lego pieces. So I'm glad that they all come with a stand and they're even labeled. So it's nice for the adult collectors. They can just kind of put them up on their shelves, smile about themselves and feel proud and good about yourself for the day and the afternoon because look, I got a figure on the shelf. So he makes me feel good. He fills my bucket. So there's, there's my small to your big. So any final thoughts on scale, Jay? Are you sticking to a certain scale going forward? Will you go all across the board? Where are you at? My friend, scale is not a make or break thing with a lion. You know, you just have a gut feeling about a lion. And me, I collect pretty much everything, so I'm all over the board. Uh, if it speaks to me, I'm gonna pick it up.